Okay, today is the uh, 22nd of August, uh, 2010, and we come to Majima Nikaya Sutta 82, Ratapala Sutta, on Ratapala. This sutta is a very interesting sutta. This, this talk tonight now uh, is the 34th uh, in the series on the Majima Nikaya, 34th. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was wandering in the Kuru country with a large Sangha of monks, and eventually he arrived at a Kuru town named Tula Kotita. The Brahmin householders of Tula Kotita heard the recluse Gautama, the son of the Sakyans, who went forth from a Sakyan clan, has been wandering in the Kuru country with a large Sangha of monks and has come to Tula Kotita. A good report of Master Gotama has been spread to this effect. That Blessed One is Arahan, Samasam Buddha, perfect in true knowledge and conduct, sublime, knower of worlds, incomparable leader of persons to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans, enlightened, blessed. He declares this world with its gods, its maras and its brahmas, this generation with its recluses and Brahmins, its princes and its people, which he has himself realized with direct knowledge. He teaches the Dhamma good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing, and he reveals a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure. Now it is good to see such Arahants. Then the Brahmin householders of Tula Kotita went to the Blessed One. Some paid homage to the Blessed One and sat down at one side. Some exchanged greetings with him, and when this courteous and amiable talk was finished, sat down at one side. Some extended their hands in reverential salutation towards the Blessed One and sat down at one side. Some pronounced their name and clan in the Blessed One's presence and sat down at one side. Some kept silent and sat down at one side. When they were seated, the Blessed One instructed, urged, roused, and encouraged them with talk on the Dhamma. Now at that time, a clansman named Ratapala, the son of the leading clan, in that same Tula Kotita was sitting in the assembly, and it occurred to him, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it is not easy while living in a home to lead the holy life. Utterly perfect and pure as a polished shell, suppose I shave off my hair and beard, put on the yellow robe, and go forth from the home life into homelessness. Then the Brahmin householders of Tula Kotita, having been instructed, urged, roused, and encouraged by the Blessed One, we talk on the Dhamma, delighted and rejoiced in his words. They then rose from their seats, and after paying homage to him, they departed, keeping him on their right. Soon after they had gone, the clansman Ratapala went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it is not easy while living in a home to lead the holy life, utterly perfect and pure as a polished shell. Venerable Sir, I wish to shave off my hair and beard, put on the yellow robe and go forth from the home life into homelessness. I would receive the going forth under the Blessed One. I would receive the full ordination. Have you been permitted by your parents, Ratapala, to go forth from the home life into homelessness? No, Verbal Sir, I have not been permitted by my parents. Ratapala, Tathagatas do not give the going forth to anyone who does not have his parents' permission. Honorable Sir, I shall see to it that my parents permit me to go forth from the home life into homelessness. Stop here for a moment. This, uh, the Buddha made a precept uh, that uh, if somebody wants to ordain, uh, he has to get the parents' permission. This came about because the Buddha uh, ordained his son, uh, Rahula, uh, at a very young age. And the Buddha's uh, father said uh, that he was very pained by this. He said when the Buddha left the house, uh, he, was, he, he was already very hurt. And then now when the grandson, uh, at that time maybe at the age of six or seven years old, uh, 
left uh, to become a novice monk, uh, he said uh, it pained him to the bone. So he asked the Buddha to next time if uh, some somebody wants to renounce uh, uh, to get the parents' permission. Uh, so the Buddha made this precept. Uh, but you can see from the ori original story uh, that it is uh, meant more for young young uh, youngsters uh, who are under the guardian of their parents. Uh, so this precept, uh, uh, even though there is such a ruling, uh, but if somebody ordains uh, without the parents' permission, uh, after that uh, he is considered ordained. So it is up to the preceptor uh, whether he wants to insist uh, uh, that somebody get the parents' permission or not. Uh. Then the clansman Ratapala rose from his seat and after paying homage to the Blessed One, he departed, keeping him on his right. He went to his parents and told them, Mother and Father, as I understand the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One, it is not easy while living in a home to lead the holy life, utterly perfect and pure as a polished shell. I wish to shave off my hair and beard, put on the yellow robe and go forth from the home life into homelessness. Give me permission to go forth from the home life into hopelessness. When he, when he had said this, his parents replied, Dear Ratapala, you are our only son, dear and beloved. You have been raised in comfort, brought up in comfort. You know nothing of suffering, dear Ratapala. Even in case of your death, we would lose you unwillingly. So how could we give you our permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? For the second time, for the third time, the clansman Ratapala said to his parents, Mother and father, give me permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness. For the third time, his parents replied, Dear Ratapala, you are our only son, dear and beloved, etc., etc. How could we give you our permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? Then not receiving his parents' permission to go forth, the clansman Ratapala lay down there on the bare floor, saying, Right here I shall either die or receive the going forth. Then the clansman Ratapala, Ratapala's parents said to him, Dear Ratapala, you are our only son, dear and beloved. You have been raised in comfort, brought up in comfort. You know nothing of suffering, dear Ratapala. Get up, dear Ratapala. Eat, drink and amuse yourself. While eating, drinking and amusing yourself, you can be happy, enjoying sensual pleasures and making merit. We do not permit you to go forth from the home life into homelessness. Even in the case of your death, we would lose you unwillingly. So how could we give you our permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? When this was said, the clansman Ratapala was silent. For the second time, for the third time, his parents said, said the same thing to him. Dear Ratapala, you are our only son, dear and beloved, etc. How could we give you our permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? For the third time, the clansman Ratapala was silent. Stop here for a moment. So, this Ratapala was very determined to get the parents' permission because the Buddha said he has to get the parents' permission. So, he lay down there, refused to get up, refused to eat. Uh, or drink, uh, so he was fasting, uh, so his parents pleaded with him, uh, kept quiet. Then the clansman Ratapala's parents went to his friends and said to them, Dears, the clansman Ratapala has laid down on the bare floor, having said, Right here I shall either die or receive the going forth. Come, dears, go to the clansman Ratapala and say to him, the Friend Ratapala, you are your parents' only son, dear and beloved, etc. Get up, friend Ratapala, eat, drink, and amuse yourself. How could your parents give you their permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? Then the clansman Ratapala's friends went to him and said, Friend Ratapala, you are your parents' only son, dear and beloved. You have been raised in comfort, brought up in comfort. You know nothing of suffering, dear Ratapala. Get up, friend Ratapala. Eat, drink, and amuse yourself. While eating, drinking, and amusing yourself, you can be happy, enjoying sensual pleasures, and making merit. Your parents do not permit you to go forth from the home life into homelessness. Even in case of your death, they will lose you unwillingly. 
So how could they give you their permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? When this was said, the clansman Ratapala was silent. For the second time and for the third time, his friend said to him, Friend Ratapala, how, uh, you are your parents' only son, etc. How could they give you their permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness while you are still living? For the third time, the clansman Ratapala was silent. Then the clansman Ratapala's friends went to his parents and said to them, Mother and father, the clansman Ratapala is lying down there on the, bla on the bare floor, having said, Right here I shall either die or get the going forth. Now, if you do not give him your permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness, he will die there. But if you give him your permission, you will see him after he has gone. And if he does not enjoy the going forth, what else can he do then but return here? So give him your permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness. Then, dears, we give the clansman Ratapala permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness. But when he has gone forth, he must visit his parents. Then the clansman Ratapala's friends went to him and told him, Get up, friend Ratapala. Your parents permit you to go forth from the home life into homelessness. But when you have gone forth, you must visit your parents. The clansman Ratapala then got up, and when he had regained his strength, he went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and told him, Remember, sir, I have my parents' permission to go forth from the home life into homelessness. Let the Blessed One give me the going forth. Then the clansman Ratapala received the going forth under the Blessed One. He received the full ordination. Then not long after the Venerable Ratapala had received the full ordination, a half month after he had received the full ordination, the Blessed One, having stayed at Ula Kutita as long as he chose, set out to wander towards Savati. Wandering by stages, he eventually arrived at Savati, and there he lived at Savati in Jeta's Grove, and at Apindika's Spa. Before long, dwelling alone, withdrawn, diligent, ardent, and resolute, the Venerable Ratapala, by realizing for himself with direct knowledge, here now entered upon and abided in the supreme goal of the holy life, for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the home life into homelessness. He directly knew birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived, what had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. And the Venerable Ratapala became one of the Arahants. Then the Venerable Ratapala went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and told him, Venerable Sir, I wish to visit my parents if I have the Blessed One's permission. Then the Blessed One penetrated mentally the thoughts in Venerable Ratapala's mind, and he knew that the clansman Ratapala was incapable of abandoning the training and returning to the low life, he told him, Now is the time, Ratapala, to do as you think fit. Let's stop here for a moment. So although here is the Sutta says, and before long, dwelling alone, withdrawn, diligent, ardent, and resolute, the Venerable Ratapala, by realizing for himself with direct knowledge, he had now entered upon and abided in the supreme goal of the holy life. Actually, it must have been a few years before he became enlightened. Then the Venerable Ratapala rose from his seat, and after paying homage to the Blessed One, he departed, keeping him on his right. He then set his resting place in order, and taking his bowl and outer robe, set out to wander towards Tula Kotita. Wandering by stages, he eventually arrived at Tula Kotita. There he lived in Tula Kotita, in King Kuravia's Migachira garden. Then when it was morning, he dressed, and taking his bowl and outer robe, went into Tula Kotita for arms. As he was wandering for arms from house to house in Tula Kotita, he came to his own father's house. Now on that occasion, the Venerable Ratapala's father was sitting in the hall of the central door, having his hair dressed. When he saw the Venerable Ratapala coming in the distance, he said, our only son, dear and beloved, was made to go forth by these ball painted recluses. Then at his own father's house, the rebel Ratapala received neither arms nor a polite refusal. Instead, he received only abuse. Just then, a slave woman belonging to one of his relatives was about to throw away some old porridge. Seeing this, the rebel Ratapala said to her, Sister, if that stuff is to be thrown away, then pour it into my bowl here. 
While she was doing so, she recognized the characteristic features of his hands, his feet, and his voice. Then he went to his mother and said, Please know, my lady, that my lord's son, Rathpala, has arrived. And the mother said, Gracious, if what you say is true, you are no longer a slave. Stop here for a moment. So you see, when he went back to his own house, I think his father did not recognize him after so many years. So abused him, chased him away. So when he, he walked away, he saw the slave about to pour away uh, overnight porridge. La. So he asked her to pour it into his bowl. La. And when she did so, uh, she recognized him. La. Uh, so told the mother. The mother was surprised. La. Then the Venerable Ratham, Ratapala's mother went to his father and said, Please know, householder, they say that the clansman Ratapala has arrived. Just then the Venerable Ratapala was eating the old porridge by the wall of a certain shelter. His father went to him and said, Ratapala, my dear, surely there is, and you'll be eating old porridge. Is there not your own house to go to? Stop here. Lah. So here the, the father uh, saw him eating this old porridge. Huh? Uh, could hardly speak. Lah. Could not finish his sentence. Lah. And Ratapala said, how could we have a house, householder? when we have gone forth from the home life into homelessness. We are homeless householder. We went to your house, but we received neither arms nor a polite refusal there. Instead, we received only abuse. Come, dear Ratapala, let us go to the house. Enough, householder. My meal for today is finished. Then, dear Ratapala, consent to accept tomorrow's meal. The verbal Ratapala consented in silence. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So, here you see... Yeah? He addressed his father as householder. In, in Mandarin, we'll say, Qi shi la, gu shu la, uh, si la. Uh. So he said, uh, we went to your house, uh, you didn't offer us any food. Uh, he said, you abuse us. La. So his father asked him to go home. La. He said, uh, we don't have a home to go to. La. Uh, his father invited him for the next day's meal. La. Then knowing that the Venerable Ratapala had consented, his father went back, went back to his own house where he had gold coins and bullion made into a large heap and covered it with mats. Then he told the Venerable Ratapala's former wives, Come, daughters-in-law, adorn yourselves with ornaments in the way Ratapala found you most dear and lovable. When night had ended, the Venerable Ratapala's father had good food of various kinds prepared in his own house and had the time announced to the Venerable Ratapala, It is time, dear Ratapala, the meal is ready. Then it being morning, the Venerable Ratapala dressed and taking his bowl and outer robe, he went to his own father's house and sat down on the seat made ready. Then his father had the pile of gold coins and bullion uncovered and said, Dear Ratapala, this is your maternal fortune. Your paternal fortune is another, and your ancestral fortune is yet another. Dear Ratapala, you can enjoy the wealth and make merit. Come then, dear, abandon the training and return to the low life. Enjoy the wealth and make merit. Stop here for a moment. So here, when the Ratapala came back to the house, his father brought out all the... Uh, uh, property uh, from the mother's side, uh, gold coins and bullion. Uh, uh, and then he said, uh, this is only your mother's uh, property. Uh, your father's property uh, is still not come out. Uh, and your uh, grandparents' properties uh, also have not, uh, are not here. There's, in other words, uh, there's a lot of wealth in this family. Uh, uh, be come back, be a layman, uh, enjoy life. Uh, at the same time, you can make merit. Uh. And then the father also asked the former wives uh, to dress up very nicely uh, uh, for him. Uh. Last time, uh, in the Buddha's days, uh, they, they did not have banks. Uh. So your money, uh, you have to hide it somewhere. Uh. <laughs> so this rich man, uh, uh, he, has, he took out his hidden uh, property. Uh, uh. And Ratapala said, Householder, if you would follow my advice, then have this pile of gold coins and bullion 
loaded on carts and carried away to be dumped midstream in the river Ganges. Why is that? Because, householder, on account of this, there will arise for you sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Then the member Ratapala's former wives clasped his feet and said to him, What are they like, my lord's son, the nymphs for whose sake you lead the holy life? And he said, We do not lead the holy life for the sake of nymphs, sisters. And they said, Our lord's son, Ratapala, calls his sisters. They cried, and right there they fainted. Then the venerable Ratapala told his father, Householder, if there is a meal to be given, then give it. Do not harass us. And his father said, Eat then, dear Ratapala. The meal is ready. Let's stop here for a moment. Huh? So here you see, huh, he's very blunt to his father. Huh? Instead of appreciating his father's uh, loads of uh, money, huh, he said, huh, If you listen to me, huh, throw away all this uh, property in the river Ganges. Why? Because if you are attached to it, it will cause you sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair later. So his former wives claps his feet and ask him, what are they like, the nymphs, the, the heavenly nymphs for whom, who say you lead the holy life? These Indians have a belief that if a person becomes a monk, uh, it is very likely uh, that that person will be reborn in heaven. Uh, so his, uh, his former wife thought uh, it's for the sake uh, of being reborn in heaven uh, and having a lot of celestial nymphs as his wives uh, that he renounced. Uh, but he said that's not the aim of eating the holy life. Uh, he called them sisters uh, and they fainted. Uh, uh. Then he told his father, don't harass us. If you want to give us a meal, just give us a meal. Then his father asked him to eat. Then with his own hands, the venerable Ratapala's father served and satisfied him with the various kinds of good food. When the venerable Ratapala had eaten and had withdrawn his hand from the bowl, he stood up and uttered these stanzas. Behold, a puppet here pranked out, a body built up out of sores, sick an object for concern where no stability abides. Before, behold a figure here pranked out with jewelry and earrings too, a skeleton wrapped up in skin, made attractive by its clothes, its feet adorned with henna dye and powder smeared upon its face. It may beguile a fool, but not a seeker of the further shore. Its hair is dressed in eightfold plates and unguent smeared upon its eyes. It may beguile a fool, but not a seeker of the further shore. A filthy body well adorned, like a new painted unguent pot. It may beguile a fool, but not a seeker of the further shore. The deer hunter set out the snare, but the deer did not spring the trap. We ate the bait and now depart, leaving the hunters to lament. Stop there for a moment. So you see, he's very blunt with his... Uh, parents uh, and uh, former wives. Uh, he's saying uh, his former wives uh, uh, just look just like a puppet, uh, uh, all dressed up uh, in jewelry and earrings uh, uh, and attractive clothes, uh, feet adorned with henna dye and powder smeared upon his face. Uh, uh, may fool an ordinary man, uh, but not a uh, seeker of the further shore, uh, cultivator, uh, it's a filthy body, uh, well adorned, uh, just like a deer hunter want to trap the deer, uh, but he said uh, he's eaten and he left, uh, he's leaving, uh, leaving the hunters to lament, uh, so he's extremely blunt to his parents. Uh. After the, the venerable Ratapala had stood up and uttered these stanzas, he went to King Kuravia's Migachira garden and sat down at the root of a tree for the day's abiding. Then King Kuravia addressed his gamekeeper thus, Good gamekeeper, tidy up the Migachira garden so that we may go to the pleasure garden to see a pleasing spot. Yes, sire, he replied. Now while he was tidying up the Migachira garden, the gamekeeper saw the rebel Ratapala seated at the root of a tree for the day's abiding. When he saw him, he went to King Kuravia and told him, Sire, the Mikachira garden has been tidied up. The clansman Ratapala is there, the son of the leading clan in this same Tulakotita, of whom you have always spoken highly. He is seated at the root of a tree for the day's abiding. 
And the king said, Then, good Migawa, enough of the pleasure garden for today. Now we shall go to pay respects to that master Ratapala. Then saying, Give away all the food that has been prepared there. King Kuravia had a number of state carriages prepared, and mounting one of them, accompanied by the other carriages, he drove out from Tula Kotita with a full pomp of royalty to see the venerable Ratapala. He drove thus as far as the road was possible for carriages, and then he dismounted from his carriage and went forward on foot with the following of the most eminent officials to where the venerable Ratapala was. He exchanged greetings with the venerable Ratapala, and when this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he stood at one side and said, Here is an elephant rock. Let Master Ratapala be seated on it. There is no need, great king. Sit down. I am sitting on my own mat. Now, stop here for a moment. So this King Kuravia, evidently, yeah, he has a high regard now, for this venerable Ratapala. Now. So when he heard that Ratapala had come back, now, quickly went to see him. Now. King Kuravia sat down on a seat made ready and said, Master Ratapala, there are four kinds of loss. Because they have undergone these four kinds of loss, some people here shave off their hair and beard, put on the yellow robe and go forth from the home life into homelessness. What are the four? They are lost through aging, lost through sickness, loss of wealth and loss of relatives. And what is lost through aging? Here, Master Ratapala, someone is old, aged, burdened with years, advanced in life, come to the last stage. He considers thus, I am old, aged, burdened with years, advanced in life, come to the last stage. It is no longer easy for me to acquire unacquired wealth or to augment wealth already acquired. Suppose I shave up my hair and beard, put on the yellow robe and go forth from the home life into homelessness. Because he has undergone that loss to aging, he shaves off his hair and beard, puts on the yellow robe and goes forth from the home life into homelessness. This is called loss through aging. But Master Ratapala is now still young, a black-haired young man, endowed with the blessing of youth, in the prime of life. Master Ratapala has not undergone any loss through aging. What has he known or seen or heard that he has gone forth from the home life into homelessness? And what is lost through sickness? Here, Master Ratapala, someone is afflicted, suffering, and gravely ill. He considers thus, I am afflicted, suffering, and gravely ill. It is no longer easy for me to acquire unacquired wealth, etc. Ah. Because he has undergone that loss through sickness, he goes forth from the home life into homelessness. This is called loss through sickness. But Master Ratapala now is free from illness and affliction. He possesses a good digestion that is neither too cool nor too warm for but medium. Master Ratapala has not undergone any loss through sickness. What has he known or seen or heard that he has gone forth from the home life into homelessness? And what is loss of wealth? Here, Master Ratapala, someone is rich, of great wealth, of great possessions. Gradually, his wealth dwindles away. He considers thus, formerly I was rich, of great wealth, of great possessions. Gradually, my wealth has dwindled away. It is no longer easy for me to acquire unacquired wealth, uh, etc. Because he has undergone that loss of wealth, he goes forth from the home life into homelessness. This is called loss of wealth. But Master Ratapala is the son of the leading clan in this same Tula Kotita. Master Ratapala has not undergone any loss of wealth. What has he known or seen or heard that he has gone forth from the home life into homelessness? And what is loss of relatives? Here, Master Ratapala, someone has many friends and companions, kinsmen and relatives. Gradually, those relatives of his dwindle away. He considers thus, Formerly, I had many friends and companions, kinsmen and relatives. Gradually, those relatives of mine have dwindled away. It is no longer easy for me to acquire unacquired wealth, etc. Because he has undergone that loss of relatives, he goes forth from the home life into homelessness. This is called loss of relatives. But Master Ratapala has many friends and companions kinsmen and relatives in this same Tula Kotita. Master Ratapala has not undergone any loss of relatives, but has he known or seen or heard that he has gone forth from the home life into homelessness? Master Ratapala, these are the four kinds of loss. 
because they have undergone these four kinds of loss. Some people here shave off their hair and beard, put on the yellow robe, and go forth from the home life into homelessness. Master Ratapala has not undergone any of these, but has he known or seen or heard that he has gone forth from the home life into homelessness? And Verbal Ratapala said, Great King Maharaja, there are four summaries of the Dhamma that have been taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha. Knowing and seeing and hearing them, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. What are the four? One, life in any world is unstable, it is swept away. This is the first summary of the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha. Knowing and seeing and hearing this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. Two, life in any world has no shelter and no protector. This is the second summary of the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha, etc. Three, life in any world has nothing of its own. One has to leave all and pass on. This is the third summary of the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha, etc. Four, life in any world is incomplete, insatiate, the slave of craving. This is the fourth summary of the Dhamma taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha, etc. Great King, these are the four summaries of the Dhamma that have been taught by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha. Knowing and seeing and hearing them, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. And the King said, Master Ratapala said, Life in any world is unstable, it is swept away. How should the meaning of that statement be understood? And Venerable Ratapala said, What do you think, great king? When you were 20 or 25 years old, were you an expert rider of elephants, an expert horseman, an expert charioteer, an expert archer, an expert swordsman, strong in thighs and arms, sturdy, capable in battle? And the king said, when I was 20 or 25 years old, Master Pratapala, I was an expert rider of elephants, an expert horseman, etc., strong in thighs and arms, sturdy, capable in battle. Sometimes I wondered if I had supernormal power then. I do not see anyone who could equal me in strength. What do you think, Great King? Are you now as strong in thighs and arms, as sturdy and as capable in battle? No, Master Pratapala, now I am old aged, burdened with years, advanced in life, come to the last stage. My years have turned 80. Sometimes I mean to put my foot here, and I put my foot somewhere else. Great King, remember Ratapala said, it was on account of this that the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha said, life in any world is unstable, it is swept away. And when I knew and saw and heard this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. And the king said, It is wonderful, Master Ratapala. It is marvelous how well that has been expressed by the Blessed One who knows and sees. Arahan Samasambuddha. Life in any world is unstable. It is swept away. It is indeed so. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So here, this king said when he was young, huh, he was extremely strong. Huh? Uh, he was so strong. Huh? Was one, he was one, sometimes he wondered now uh, where his all his uh, all his strength uh, uh, came from, uh, and he couldn't see anyone uh, who could equal him in strength. Uh, but now that he's 80 years old, uh, he said uh, he wants to put his foot here and his foot goes somewhere else, uh, just like uh, many people. Uh, uh, walk was so unstable, uh, so he agreed. Uh, life is it is unstable. Uh, I just swept away. Master Ratapala, there exists in this court elephant troops and cavalry and chariot troops and infantry which will serve to subdue any threats to us. Now Master Ratapala said, life in any world has no shelter and no protector. How should the meaning of that statement be understood? What do you think, great king? Do you have, do you have any chronic ailment? I have a chronic wind ailment, Master Ratapala. Sometimes my friends and companions, kinsmen and relatives, stand around me thinking, now King Koravia is about to die. Now King Koravia is about to die. What do you think, great king? Can you command your friends and relatives, your friends and companions, your kinsmen and relatives, 
Come, my good friends and companions, my kinsmen and relatives, all of you present, share this painful feeling so that I may feel less pain. Or do you have to feel that pain yourself alone? I cannot command my friends and companions, my kinsmen and relatives thus, Master Ratapala. I have to feel that pain alone. Great King, it was on account of this that the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha, said, Life in any world has no shelter and no protector. And when I knew and saw and heard this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. It is wonderful, Master Ratapala. It is marvelous how well that has been expressed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha. Life in any world has no shelter and no protector. It is indeed so. Let's stop here for a moment. So here, referring to this uh, saying uh, that life in any world has no shelter and no protector, the king says uh, he has so much soldiers, uh, so much troops, uh, uh, he, he thought uh, that was his shelter and protector. Uh, but when uh, this uh, member Ratapala asked him about his sickness, uh, he said, oh yeah, yeah, he has this uh, sickness uh, which gives him so much pain uh, and he cannot share that pain with anybody else. Uh, so that's why it's true, uh, life has no shelter and no protector. Master Ratapala, there exists in this court Abundant gold coins and bullion stored away in vaults and depositories. Now, Master Ratapala said, Life in any world has nothing of its own. One has to leave all and pass on. How should the meaning of that statement be understood? What do you think, great king? You now enjoy yourself provided and endowed with the five cords of sensual pleasure. But will you be able to have it of the life to come? Let me likewise enjoy myself provided and endowed with these safe same five cords of sensual pleasure. Or will others take over this property while you will have to pass on according to your actions or karma? I cannot have it thus of the life to come, Master Ratapala. On the contrary, others will take over this property while I have to pass on according to my actions. Great King, it was on account of this that the Blessed One who knows and sees Arahan Samasambuddha said, life in any world has nothing of its own. One has to leave all and pass on. And when I knew and saw and heard this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. It is wonderful, Master Ratapala. It is marvelous how well that has been expressed by the Blessed One who knows and sees Arahan Samasambuddha. Life in any world has nothing of its own. One has to leave all and pass on. It is indeed so. Ah, stop here for a moment. So here... Uh, this uh, member Ratapala is trying to show the king uh, that uh, we came to this world empty-handed. And however much property and wealth we accumulate, uh, not one cent uh, we can take with us. Uh, so uh, it's no point uh, to, uh, to accumulate so much money uh, when you can't even take one cent with you. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, this uh, member Ratapala he realized this uh, and left home. Uh. Now, Master Ratapala said, Life in any world is incomplete, insatiate, a slave of craving. How should the meaning of that statement be understood? What do you think, great king? You reign over the rich Kuru country. Yes, Master Ratapala, I do. What do you think, great king? Suppose a trustworthy and reliable man came to you from the east and said, Please know, great king, that I have come from the east. And there I saw a large country, powerful and rich, very populous and crowded with people. There are plenty of elephant troops there, plenty of cavalry, chariot troops and infantry. There is plenty of ivory there, and plenty of gold coins and bullion, both unworked and worked, and plenty of women for wives. With your present forces, you can conquer it. Conquer it then, great king. What would you do? We would conquer it and reign over it, Master Ratapala. What do you think, great king? Suppose a trustworthy and reliable man came to you from the west, from the north, from the south, and similarly said, nah, Please know, great king, that I have come from the north, from the west, from the south, nah, and there I saw a large country, powerful and rich, etc. Nah, and with your present forces, nah, you can conquer it. Nah. Concrete then, great king, what would you do? You would concrete too and reign over it, Master Ratapala. Great king, it was on account of this that the Blessed One who knows and sees, Arahan Samasambuddha, said, 
life in any world is incomplete, insatiate, the slave of craving. And when I knew and saw and heard this, I went forth from the home life into homelessness. It is wonderful, Master Ratapala. It is marvelous how well that has been expressed by the Blessed One who knows and sees. Arahant Sama Buddha. Life in any world is incomplete, insatiate, the slave of craving. It is indeed so. Um, stop you for a moment. Uh. So here, uh, this uh, Venerable Ratapala showed the king uh, that uh, even though now he's so rich and powerful, uh, and yet uh, he's not satisfied. If there were another country, uh, rich and uh, and he's able to conquer it uh, with his uh, army, uh, uh, he would, because of greed, uh, still want to conquer some other countries. Uh, uh. However, many countries he conquers, uh, still not enough. Uh, still cannot satisfy that greed, uh, the craving. Uh. That is what the Venerable Ratapala said. And having said, he said further, I see men wealthy in the world, who yet from ignorance give not their gathered wealth. Greedily they hoard away their riches, longing still for further sensual pleasures. A king who has conquered the earth by force, and rules over the land, the ocean bounds, is yet unsated with the sea's near shore and hungers for its further shore as well. Most other people too, not just a king, encounter death with craving unabated. With plans still incomplete, they leave the corpse. Desires remain unsated in the world. His relatives lament and rend their hair, crying, Ah me, alas, our love is dead. They bear away the body wrapped in shrouds to place it on a pyre and burn it there. Clad in a shroud, he leaves his wealth behind. Prodded with stakes, he burns upon the pyre. And as he dies, no relatives or friends can offer him shelter and refuge here. While his heirs take over his wealth, this being must pass on according to his actions of karma. And as he dies, nothing can follow him. Not child, nor wife, nor wealth, nor royal estate. Longevity is not acquired with wealth, nor can prosperity banish old age. Short is this life, as all the sages say. Eternity it knows not, only change. The rich and poor alike shall feel death's touch. The fool and sage as well shall feel it too. But while the fool lies stricken by his folly, no sage will ever tremble at the touch. Better is wisdom here than any wealth, since by wisdom one gains the final goal. For people through ignorance do evil deeds, while failing to reach the goal from life to life. As one goes to the womb and the next world, renewing the successive round of births, another of little wisdom, trusting him, goes also to the womb and the next world. Just as a robber caught in burglary is made to suffer for his evil deed, so people after death in the next world are made to suffer for their evil deeds. Sensual pleasures, varied, sweet, delightful, in many different ways disturb the mind. Seeing the danger in these sensual ties, I chose, I chose to lead the homeless life, O King. As fruits fall from the tree, so people too, both young and old, fall when this body breaks. Seeing this too, O King, I have gone forth. Better is the recluse's life assured. Uh, that's the end of the sutta. So here, um, when somebody like this, Ratapala, he learns the Dhamma and understands the Dhamma, then he sees uh, no point uh, in living an ordinary life. Uh, in, when we lead an ordinary life, uh, we, because of the self, uh, which we have not eliminated, uh, we become selfish. Uh, uh, so we strive very hard uh, for our own end only, uh, for our own ends. Uh, uh, so in the process uh, of striving to benefit yourself, uh, you create a lot of unwholesome karma. So at the end, uh, after you, you acquire a lot of wealth, a big family, uh, big house, big car, everything, uh, when it's time for you to go, uh, a lot of people uh, start to think uh, what is life all about. Uh, Mm -hmm. All that they wanted for, they strove for, they have attained. At the end of life, huh, they have to leave everything behind. Uh, so what's the point? Making all that striving. 
So somebody understands the Dhamma, then he's willing to let go 